Hey YouTube, this is a video write-up for the challenge Big Boy from Seesaw CTF in the Pwn or Binary Exploitation category. Challenge prompt is only Big Boy Pwners will get this one. Gives us a little netcat command to connect to the real service and a binary to download. So if you wanted to, you could W get this. Uh, I just have it in my current directory right now. So it is just a 64-bit executable. Let's mark it as executable so we can work with it and run it. It says, are you a big boy? And I'm just going to say yes. <laughs> and it gives me the date and nothing else to it. So weird, that's all, whatever. Let's do some reconnaissance. Look at some strings in here if you wanted to. We can see bin date, so it must be running that command. Same thing, we have a bin bash somewhere in the shell and system and read and everything. So um, we've got the potential to maybe try and run bash or run a shell here. So what I did is actually I opened it up in Hopper and you can download it from hopperapp.com. If you want to get it there, it doesn't cost too much money, the free version. Well, the free version, obviously, it doesn't cost a whole lot of money, but even the pro version does not cost that much. You can see the strings here. If you wanted to jump to the cross-references, you can just go to main function just like that, or check it out in the procedures on the side. And then if you have the other version, I, I don't know if it's specific to um, the full version or just the regular free version. If you would alt and enter from the current procedure, you can see the pseudocode for it. So they give us a main function in close to C, and it gives us some variables that it's reading, displays it on the screen, are you a big boy, tries to read into a variable 30, and then it tries to test if 0x dead beef is equal to 0x cafe bay. If it will, if, if that's true, it'll run bash, otherwise it'll run date. So I looked at this and thought that was really, really weird, because why is it trying to test two constants that are obviously different and determine whether or not they are equal to each other? I thought this was very, very strange, because it wouldn't have included this comparison, like the compiler wouldn't have even included this code if it was never ever going to get there. So I thought something very strange was going on. Um, and for that reason, I checked it out in another uh, disassembler. I just kind of ran obj dump on it. And if you wanted to, you could probably run radar, which is a much smarter move, but I'm not that smart, at least not yet. <laughs> Hopefully I'll learn a little bit more radar. I need to learn a lot more about it. Um, but I just jumped to the main function, checked it out, and then I could see, okay, it is calling puts, it is calling read, just as we saw in the pseudo decompilation here for, that Hopper gave us. But after we go ahead and read, we're storing the return of it in EAX, obviously, and then we're going to determine if EAX is then compared to 0x Cafe Bay. So it's something from our read uh, comparison that's actually determining whether or not we go to uh, run CMD with bash or run CMD with date. So all we need to do essentially is just get this 0x Cafe Bay and get it to a point where we're overflowing this var 30 perhaps or what we're actually testing here to run bin bash. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to use Python here and Pwn tools. So import Pwn just to see what uh, this hexadecimal value is in Little Endian. So we can go ahead and copy that. And then we, if we wanted to, we could use Python to just simply print that out. Python taxi, print this stuff here. And now we have the bytes that we'll go ahead and give to the program. We'll give that to big boy, but we need to be able to include up to where we're going to actually start to overflow into var 30 or whatever we're testing to determine if it's EAX and equals cafe bay, etc. So, um, you can see in the read function here, we're actually reading in however many bytes at the very, very end, or the size and the length here. If you want to just pump that 0x18 into Python again, check out how big that buffer would originally be. 24. Okay, let's go ahead and try and do a little machine gun spread, or a little spray to determine what index do we actually want, what index is actually going to give us uh, the leak into Cafe Bay here. So what I do in this case is I do like a little 4i in, and then a range that we want. Let's go 20 to 28, in which case we can echo out the occurrence that we're working on, and then print out a times the dollar sign i in the value that we're working with here, and then our... Uh, obviously the, the cafe bay that we want all the way and pumped in here and let's do done. Hopefully, I know me saying that out loud didn't make much sense. <laughs> Doing a for loop to just iterate through numbers where we could possibly hit and grab EAX, get the position filled with cafe bay, and we'll run bash instead of date. And I'm just testing which number are we actually not going to receive date on, so I wanted to display it out on the screen with echo 
our iterator here. So I run through this, crank, 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 and 28, 27, all of these occurrences, it looks like we're still getting date displayed. So 20, obviously, does not have date displayed. So, okay, maybe we can just say print A times 20, and then add in our exploit there. And it doesn't display date, so it must be trying to open up a shell for us. But it's being closed immediately. So what we have to do is kind of capture it, try and hold it, because once bash, once that shell opens up, it's waiting for input from standard input, but we're using a pipe here and we pretty much just killed it. So we need to capture it. A cool way we can do that is just go ahead and grab, after we have the payload, cat. So standard input will remain open, and then we can actually work with the shell that we've got here. So I just wrap that in parentheses and use a semicolon to separate the commands here. And now I can run ls, and I can run who am I, and I can cat flag if we were working with the real netcat service. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take this exploit, or this payload, so to speak, not really an exploit here. Let's go ahead and pipe that to the netcat command that we're given. So we're working with the remote service now, not just our local binary. And then once we're given, are you a big boy? We have supposedly a shell that we were able to work with. So we can check out art.text. We can do whatever we want to do, say, who am I? But obviously there's a flag here we want to grab. So let's cat flag.text. And we've got the flag. Sweet. You can go ahead and save this if you want, nanoflag.txt, paste it in there, make sure we've got some work for it. Uh, if you wanted to maybe save this as just like a simple get shell script or something, so you don't lose track of your solution. Um, but the real takeaways from this is simply using pwn tools, and if you didn't use pwn tools to get 0x Cafe Bay in Little Endian, you can do it with the struct module in Python. Because that's built in. You don't have to install Pwn tools for that. You can just do struct.pack and then as a string with the format specifier, the less than symbol for little, little endian, and then capital I for integer, paste in our hex value as the other argument. And we've got, again, little endian representation of it. So we can print out the raw bytes. Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hey, quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. This list is getting so much longer and it's incredible. It's really surreal. So thank you guys so much. I can't say it enough. Uh, $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. $5 or more on Patreon will give you early access to everything that I release on YouTube before it goes live. So if I record a bunch of videos in bulk and then I usually just have YouTube like gradually schedule them to be released over time, you don't have to wait. You can get the content right when it's ready. Just $5 a month. Thanks. <laughs> If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Join our Discord server. It's in a cool community full of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. Um, we're going to be playing a lot of CTFs together. We're actually trying to form when we can and when it's okay to, like, a big Discord team. And otherwise, we'll just divide uh, into smaller teams to play th some games that have a team cap. Um, so we'll be looking at Seesaw Red coming up this weekend. We're going to be looking at Pico CTF and everything else that's coming down the pipeline. So please do join. We're going to have a great time. Thanks again, guys. Hope to see you on Patreon. Hope to see you in the next video. Love ya. Bye.